Oh, what's going on here? Yeah, there we go. So, uh, methods muddiest and most interesting. Uh, let's get to the muddiest. I have a couple of muddiest uh, uh, statements that I want to respond to. There we go. Uh, first one about error. Uh, the possibility. The st this student talked about the possibility for error uh, in measurements. Uh, they said that the validity section, the goal is to assure that our test is being measured in a way that it is supposed to be measured. No, not our test, but our construct. Uh, that is, we use a test or we use an inventory to measure someone standing on a construct. Uh, but the student goes on to say, how can we absolutely make sure that we are not, uh, that we are testing is not being exposed to error in some sort of way and the answer to that is just by being careful scientists its measurement and measuring things is a, one of the most difficult areas in science altogether the physical sciences spent much of the 17th 18th and 19th century uh, coming to grips with measuring physical uh, force electrical force radiation, chemical values, even measuring uh, precisely the amount of chemicals uh, you know present. And psychology is in uh, the same era, you would say, as a science, in that we're trying to uh, become more expert at measuring things. And we're measuring psychological concepts. And so we have these uh, techniques, validity and reliability, to measure uh, constructs and we attempt to do so with little error as possible. In some cases uh, with for example uh, reliability we can actually set the level of error and know precisely what level of error we're dealing with. Uh, we can also uh, with validity do things to uh, assure ourselves that our uh, you know, measure measures the construct that we think it's measuring and we can generate numbers uh, you know, data that gives us an indication of how well it's doing that. But then there are other types of error in psychological experiments. And what we need to do is we need to learn about them and learn the techniques that psychologists use to control for them. Which, of course, is why it's important that you learn research methods. Because if you just look at an article and it says this researcher did this and found this, uh, do you just believe them? The answer is no. Uh, you have to make sure that you can review their methodology and that you can see that they did everything as carefully as they should. And that's why it's important for psychology majors to understand methodology. Uh, another student had a question about replications and extensions. Uh, and their question was about in exact replications, how do you do the exact uh, replication. So what you do is you try to get every, everything exactly the same uh, from the original study. Now most likely you'll be replicating a study done in another lab at another university and oftentimes you'll have to contact uh, the researcher to ask them for more information about the equipment they used and how they did things. Even though uh, APA style articles have those long, dense method sections. They're not as exacting as they could be. And oftentimes, uh, you have to guess what you need to do to replicate what they say in the journal. Uh, and so that's one thing you would do. Uh, the student specifically talks about participants. Would we use the same participants? Well in the scenario I just described where you're at a different university and you're reading about somebody's study and you want to replicate it uh, the answer is well you can't use the same subjects even if I wanted to replicate my own experiment I wouldn't want to use my uh, original subjects the original participants uh, are now uh, aware of the experiment and so if I would make them do the experiment again they may remember parts of the experiment, they may be prepared for things, and that's not normal behavior. 
uh, people don't walk around in real life knowing about the you know inner workings of different psychological experiments and so that behavior is in a way tainted it's tainted by their knowledge about the experiment because we want to look at natural behaviors and a natural behavior is not somebody who has on their mind an experiment they were just in and they're in again uh, but what I would do if I would wanted to replicate my own research is draw subjects or draw participants from the same population I did before so if I last semester collected data from the York College research pool uh, I would do the same thing again I would use the research pool I would uh, solicit uh, volunteers the exact same way I did and that's still considered an exact replication because we have different subjects from the same population and based on statistical theory that's pretty much the same thing so that's how we would do an exact replication with uh, the same participants not the same exact participants but demographically the same participants and participants collected from the same source and a student asked about uh, pilot testing and in pilot testing uh, it's just a simple little uh, mini experiment that you do before your big experiment the reason why is your main experiment would probably involve a lot of work a lot of cost and a lot of time and you don't want to go into that cost and time and work uh, without knowing that each individual component of the experiment works and so what you'll do is you'll do a little test experiment to see if different parts of the experiment work in a pilot study uh, and so uh, often I am creating brand new uh, tests or uh, you know measures uh, for my experiments and so I commonly will do a pilot test of the measure before I do the full uh, experiment and the reason why is I want to see how well the reliability of the test questions are and so I will do a reliability analysis which means calculating uh, reliability data usually a chrome back alpha and then I will uh, go further and I will delete every question one at a time and recalculate the chrome back alpha and I will look to see how the alpha changes uh, after deleting each individual question and usually I'll find out of 20 questions four or five questions are bad in that when I remove them from uh, the test the reliability goes up and so that indicates that people are answering these uh, individual questions with more error or more variability than the other questions and so I would reduce the amount of error in my experiment uh, if I would uh, leave those questions out and that's a very common thing to do in a reliability analysis and you want to do that in your pilot testing phase because you don't want to like realize once you've collected all the data that your uh, measure is bad and you have to start over again and really that's all I had to work with because uh, uh, I was not really pleased with the level of analysis of students uh, and you may have seen that with grading I uh, said that this was going to be a low stakes and normally for this assignment I give 100s to everybody uh, but uh, the responses were so poor in general I gave 85 a solid B to people if they had something and a hundred or so if uh, people had something I could work with which was not much as you saw uh, usually I have a lot of things I could respond to from this assignment and what was going on uh, I think three things were happening first uh, students were not really following the directions I asked for one most interesting thing and one muddiest thing and for the muddiest thing I gave you prompts uh, specifically uh, what don't you understand about this what questions would you like to ask about this and some people gave like lists they listed several ideas that they were muddy about but they didn't describe what they were muddy about so that's something that I can't respond to 
Uh, I already gave you a lecture about reliability. It's on the video. So asking me again in general about reliability, I'll give you the same lecture. So I need to know what you don't understand. And I didn't get that. Uh, and I think uh, the grade of 85 for people who just said, I don't understand anything, or, or technically a lot of people said, I don't understand validity and reliability. Well, 85, I think, is a really good grade for an answer like that. Uh, college students, uh, when asked to you know, think about something uh, in a college-level class, it should not be something like, eh, I just didn't understand anything, especially when the professor was asking you to analyze things. Uh, so those were a couple reasons why uh, I didn't really get many uh, good, meaty, uh, muddiest items to respond to. Uh, but also, I think this is another reason. Uh, YouTube will count the number of views, and this is for the uh, part two of construct validity. And in the last month, 12 people viewed the video lecture. So if uh, you know all those 12 were from the class, and they may not, may not be, uh, they could be from another country, but if all those 12 were from this class, that means only half the subjects watched uh, the uh, 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 part two video. In fact, the watch time in hours was 1.2, uh, which means they only watched, the 12 people who watched it, only watched about you know a third of it, maybe. So I think this is why a lot of students just said, I don't understand reliability or I don't understand validity. They're explained in the videos you just didn't engage with them. And this is not appropriate behavior for college students. And in the future, uh, I expect you to behave like college students and to do work at the level of college students. Uh, this is not a blow-off class. Uh, this is an important class, and you will be graded accordingly.